Okay, here is the third free response from the AP Physics 2 2021 uh, exam. As usual, uh, if I have any corrections below, please, or if I make any mistakes, leave in the comments or check the description. I'll update the description with any corrections that I have on any mistakes I make. Okay, an electromagnet produces a magnetic field that is uniform in a certain region and zero outside that region. The graph above represents the field as a function of the current in the electromagnetic with positive field direction directed out of the page and negative field directed into the page. Okay, the current in the electromagnet is set at 0.5 I1. When a charged particle in the region moves towards the top of the page, the force exerted on it by the, okay, uh, is uh, towards the left as shown above. What, what, what changes to the current electromagnet could make the magnitude of the force exerted on the particle equal to two FB in the direction of the force to the right? Support your answers using phys physical, uh, physics principles. Okay, so um, the um, the force from a magnetic field is going to be equal to QV cross B. Okay, so this is the cross product. Use the right hand rule to establish direction, and then you use the magnitudes. You just multiply the magnitudes uh, if you want to. So if you wanted to double this, and you're going to leave the same charge alone. And you're going to leave the velocity alone. The only thing you can do is change the magnetic field. So um, you would want to, um, well, how is the magnetic field affected? Well, the magnetic field, from you can see from the graph, is affected by the, the amount of current. So let's say we're at 0.5 I1. So we're right here. If I want to double it, if I want to double the magnetic field, I need to do it here. That will double the, the magnetic field, but I also want to flip the direction because I want to point right and to the left. So I actually want to go to negative I1. So in principle, what I would say is like um, to have FB flip and double, we need to double the strength, double B, and uh, change its direction and, and reverse its direction. Because the graph, oops, the graph of B versus I versus current is linear. We need to do you have I equals um, negative I one. Okay. So just change the current or change the current, flip it, flip the direction of the current and double the current that it was doing before. Because we were at point five I one, you gotta double it to make it I one. Okay, circuit is made by connecting an ohmic light bulb of resistance R and a circular loop of area A made of a wire with negligible resistance. The circuit is placed with the plane in um, with the plane of the loop perpendicular to the field of the electromagnet shown on the left. The magnetic field changes a function of time as shown in graph two. The bulb dissipates energy during the interval. Graph two shows the cumulative energy dissipated by the bulb. The total energy since t equals zero is a function of time. The original bulb is replaced with a new ohmic light bulb with greater resistance, but everything else stays the same. How would the cumulative energy graph for the new bulb be different, if at all, from graph three above? Support your answer using physical print, physics principles. Okay, so you know, in, in terms of a circuit, we would say the the in terms of we don't usually talk about energy; we talk about power. Power is equal to voltage times current. But the voltage is due to um, is uh, the voltage is equal to um, the change in the flux, you know, it, or the magnitude of the voltage is the magnitude of the change in the flux. Sorry, the change in the flux per time, and this part is staying the same because we're keeping the same flux through the loop. We're not changing the size of the loop at all. We're just changing the light bulb. So the area uh, through the loop is staying the same and the magnetic field change is staying the same. That part is where it's changing in the same way it as it was before. So that part is the same. So the voltage stays the same. 
However, the current, which is equal to V over R, is, is, is down by one half, right? So what? So if V is constant and I is, so really you can use, for a resistance equation, you can use I squared, or sorry, V squared over R, because that's probably easier to show because we know that the V is constant. We know the I is gonna cut in half, but the V is constant. So what happens is if the R doubles, R goes up 2X, then um, the power drops by 2x, which means the energy in the same time drops by 2x. So what the new graph would look like, if you asked me to sketch it, it would be like half of what it was before. It would look like that. So it would be the same graph, same shape, but y values are all cut in half. Okay. You would probably write that in words. I'm not going to write everything in words because that would be kind of long, but I kind of explained what I would probably describe um, for an answer like that. The new light bulb is removed and replaced by the original light bulb. The magnetic field now changes from 2B to negative 2B during the same time interval. A new cumulative energy graph is created for this situation. How would this new graph be different, if at all, from graph 3? Support. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're saying, now we're going back to the original bulb, but now we're, we're, we're changing this part, right? So the rate of change now of the, the slope of this guy in the same amount of time he goes from a change of 2b to a change of 4b so his his rate of change of the flux because the area of the circle is not changing so the flux is just due to change of the magnetic field that magnetic field is twice as much twice as much magnetic field change is going to be twice as much voltage so twice oops twice the the change in um b where phi is equal to b times a, uh, results in double the voltage. Okay, power is equal to v squared over r. Okay, because I know the voltage across the bulb is doubled um, and the resistance is the same, that means it's going to, um, you're going to square this. So this is going to be uh, the, the power is now, oh, sorry, if I double the voltage, power is now four times as much. Because I doubled the voltage, now the power is going to be uh, doubled, or sorry, quadrupled, keep saying doubled. So that means the energy is 4x. And so the graph is going to be four times higher. So the graph still same shape but y values are four times as much i actually wanted to do a correction on part d because someone pointed out when i first uploaded this video that um i did interpret d incorrectly on this one and so and it was such a glaring error that i think it warrants an explanation as to what the correct answer is so if you saw the previous version i i have modified and updated so i, I thank you for pointing out my my mistake so Part D, a student derives the following expression for the cumulative energy dissipated by the original bulb during the interval T1 less than T to less than T3 with the original change in magnetic field shown in graph 2. Whether or not the equation is correct, does the functional dependence on cumulative energy and the elapsed time make physical sense? Support your answer using physical principles. So before I had made the mistake that like this T1 to T3, like it was a shorter time, so it'd be a shorter amount of energy. But I think they're saying on graph 2, basically, we go back up to a, the the graph one here is that it is that I'm going to if I shrink these th things together basically the magnetic field is going to change even faster than it had before right so not only I'm, I'm collapsing the the I'm collapsing the time that the magnetic field is changing and thus I'm changing the the cumulative effect so if if we would look if we were to look at that we would say okay so what's going to happen is the voltage which is really related to the change in the flux divided by the change in the time, which is really the, the change in the magnetic field times the area. The area is constant 
over time. Okay, so this this rate is now lower, right? Because we're doing the same change in the magnetic field in a shorter amount of time. That means the V has a has a dependency that's one over time. Okay, or this is change in the magnetic field times the area divided by T3 minus T1. Okay, so how does that affect the energy? Well, the power, I would say, is V squared over R. So that means it has a dependency that's 1 over T3 minus T1 squared. But the energy is the power times the time, the elapsed time, which then has a dependency, the power has a dependency T3 minus T1 squared. And the time has a dependency T3 minus T1. That results in a dependency that's 1 over T3 minus T1. And that matches my dependency with that one there. So I would say, yes, it makes physical sense. I would expect the dependencies to be inversely related to time. So I think this would be correct. Uh, a correct relationship. So that I feel like is a little bit... Um, clear as to like what's happening before I just looked at the time in terms of energy dependency but I, I was forgetting that the t3 and the t1 actually shrinks the change in the mag like the rate that the magnetic field is changing is much more rapid and so it changes uh, uh, very quickly there and so then I just kind of use kind of what I, the formulas I had used before to derive the correct dependency um, if that makes physical sense I don't know if there's a different way. If this feels like a little bit elaborate to explain the dependency, but um, you know that 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 part makes sense to me in terms of. I mean, th that that's why I, would, I know I'm like I'm not supposed to derive the the equation, but just like make sure if that dependency was correct. So I, I think that part seems seems better now.